Okay, welcome back everyone. In this video, we're gonna try to develop a dynamic model for a simple blend blending problem, okay? Now, I want you guys to pause the video for a second and read the following problem statement, okay? We'll be back soon. Okay, I'm assuming you guys have read the problem by now and uh, let's I'm gonna go through this with you this time let's see a stream containing two moles per liter of sodium silicate I'm gonna mark sodium silicate as my species a uh, give me a second yep this one okay species a species a is to be uh, my apologies for the typo even though I'm not typing I'm supposed to handwrite this is to be mixed with uh, 10 moles per liter sodium silicate stream so we have two streams that are being blended together to to achieve a different a uh, uh, one stream is being diluted the other one is being concentrated we're given the flow rates wonderful okay 200 liters per hour uh, 200 okay and we're also given the volume of the mixing vessel the last sentence says that the mixing chamber is overflow okay I'm sure you guys are wondering what does that mean and let's answer your question shall we here I have the uh, schematic now stream 1 and stream 2 are the input streams this one the stream one is the um, two mole per liter stream two molar moles per liter is equal to one molar and stream two is 10 mole per liter or you can write the uh, capital M if you remember that from general chemistry by overflow by overflow I I hope you guys can see that in this schematic the uh, output the output stream right here is actually going from uh, is actually coming off from the top of the vessel instead of something like this okay in this problem that is not the case so in order for an overflow tank in order to get the product your out your output flow your total output flow must equal total input flow think about that for a second okay i want you to really visualize this problem because if you have uh, if you're once you're in startup okay once you're startup in the startup phase and your level is still right here you, you're not going to have product you're not going to have product if your level is at the bottom you can only have product for overflow reactors once the uh, tank has filled up all the way to the top so that you can siphon the tubes the pipes can siphon some product out from the top okay so for that to happen there can it can only be in operation if both the output flow and the input flow are equal i hope that makes sense okay now I'm gonna move forward and write a simple mole balance on a on a all right so I'm gonna start off by writing the uh, accumulation term as I said we're not gonna omit we're not gonna omit the accumulation terms anymore so the rate of change of moles of a in our system in my vessel how many inputs do I have? I have two streams that are coming in. And I know the uh, molarities, I know the concentration. So I'm just going to call that CA1 times Q.1. I'm going to be using a lowercase q to represent flow rates, volumetric flow rates. So these two are going to be the input streams and ca3 q3 
is going to be the output stream. Obviously, as you can see, I do not have a reaction. Uh, this is not a reacting system. So therefore, I do not need a source or sync term. Okay, um, I know the volume of the vessel is constant, right? We know the volume of the vessel is constant. The volume of the vessel, once it's in operation, it cannot change. Um, the volume has to be at the top. Otherwise, the overflow stream is not going to have any flow rate. I'm going to break down Na as ddt is equal to some concentration multiplied by the volume of the vessel is equal to all this good stuff on the right hand side okay let's see uh copy that paste it right here there we go uh almost almost beautiful now just a critical thinking question I want you guys to pause the video and think about the relationship between this concentration and this concentration. And the hint is well mixed system. Pause the video for a second and think about it. All right. I hope you guys have given it a moment to think about it. In a well mixed system, in a well mixed system, the concentration of concentration of exit streams has to be equal the concentration of exit streams has to be equal to the concentration inside the vessel that's the uh, meaning that's the mathematical implication of having a well mixed system so if you have concentration C A if the contents if it's a well mixed system first off we need to have it well mixed that's our assumption if it's a perfectly well mixed system the uh, concentration inside the vessel will be the same as the concentration of the product stream because the uh, there are no spatial variations the product stream has to come out it's basically the output of the contents inside the vessel and we have no spatial variations inside the vessel okay therefore this ca on the left hand side i'm just going to rewrite this as ca3 okay uh ca3 there we go all right uh let's get this for let's get this out of the way for now volume is constant volume has to remain constant so i can just take the volume out of the derivative I'm gonna add a, a I'm gonna add this T in parentheses to signify that this variable can change with time and for now I'm gonna assume that all my input variables all my upstream variables all my both of my stream 1 and stream 2 are upstream they're going into the process I'm assuming that they can vary with time okay so basically what I've written here the model that I've tried to represent here captures the uh, tries to capture the changes in the output variable the output concentration it's gonna capture changes in the output changes in output based on uh, based on let's say we can have changes in inlet concentration one we can have changes in the inlet flow rate for stream one we can have changes in the inlet concentration for stream two and as you can see we can have changes in inlet concentration for stream flow rate sorry flow rate for stream two so the changes in upstream variables in controls upstream is often interchanged by input because we have to all the disturbances for your system are going to happen at the upstream and they're going to propagate through your system and disturb your final product so that's how you model it so all the changes in upstream variables we want to know how that's going to impact our output variable 
and obviously the output variable is what we're trying to control trying to control right because that's what we're gonna make money off of right now we're just um, so yeah this is basically the uh, differential equation that describes our system and one last thing I almost forgot remember when we said that for an overflow system for an overflow system the output flow rate has to equal the total input flow rate therefore therefore you can rewrite you can have q3 in terms of q1t plus q2t and by uh, if you want you can substitute that and reduce the uh, number of variables in your equation if you want or you can just leave it as it is and uh, when you have multiple differential equations i encourage you to not use analytical analytical techniques because it's going to be a real headache i would usually prefer some numerical techniques some numerical methods which we will be going through in later videos so yeah guys we were able to get a mole balance we were able to map the uh, the dynamics of the inlet concentration oh sorry the uh, we were able to map the dynamics of the uh, concentration inside the vessel based on the changes in our various upstream variables okay uh yep thanks for watching i hope this was helpful